Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about diagnostic medical sonographers and I'm going to give you the job overview and some different types, the education requirements, some of the likes and the dislikes, and then some detailed salary statistics for this profession. And this is a continuation of a series I've been doing on different healthcare salaries. I've been covering nurses and doctors and about everything in between. So you may want to check out in the description if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. Okay, so first of all, what does a diagnostic medical sonographer actually do? Well, these individuals operate imaging equipment to create images or conduct tests so that they can diagnose or assess certain conditions. One of the types of diagnostic medical sonographers that you're probably most familiar with is the ultrasound tech, which is where when a woman is pregnant, they will go and they will take ultrasound images of the baby. So that's an example of one of these diagnostic medical sonographers. Um, some of the daily tasks that these individuals will do include explaining procedures and obtaining medical history of patients. They will prepare and maintain equipment. They will review images or check test results for accuracy. They will analyze diagnostic information and summarize that information for the physician. They will also record their findings and track a patient's records. So there are several different types. For example, you have abdominal sonographers, breast sonographers that would maybe follow up after breast cancer has been detected to go in and look at more tissue. They, there are muscul uh, musculoskeletal, pediatric, and obstetric, which again is the uh, individuals who go in and take those ultrasounds of those babies. And of course, there's a whole other area, which is cardiovascular. That's another area where I won't discuss that too much in this video, but that just gives you an example of some of the different types. Now, let's talk about the education requirements. What do you have to do if you want to enter this profession? Well, first of all, you generally need either an associate's or a bachelor's degree from an accredited school. You can do it through a certificate program as well, and some hospitals and healthcare facilities will offer that. But the big key here, whichever program you choose, you want to make sure that it's properly accredited because there are some scammy, shady programs out there. You want to make sure you go with a good program. A recommendation is that you go with the uh, an accreditation by the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs, or also called the CAAHEP. And that way you can make sure that it's accredited by a program that is well respected. And of course, just like with nursing and a lot of these other healthcare professions, you will have clinical time as a part of your education requirements. And once you get your clinical time completed and and make sure you meet all the education requirements, then you can begin to work in this profession. And it's really strongly recommended that you do seek certification. A lot of employers will actually require that. And you can become certified through the American Registry for Diagnostic Medical Sonographers. Okay, now let's talk about some of the likes and the dislikes. What do individuals in this profession like and what aggravates them about it? Well, First of all, these individuals tend to like that they have usually a pretty good schedule. It's usually like a Monday through Friday, nine to five type job if they work in a clinic or a private practice. Now, some will work in hospitals and they can have a little bit more crazier shifts there, but there are a lot of areas where you can obtain a nice schedule. Another thing is that you earn a pretty good income, which I'll talk about in a minute. Compared to the education requirements, it's a pretty high paying job. Another thing is it tends to be relatively low stress because you're just creating images and it's usually a more laid back environment. Some of the dislikes, first of all, some people feel that there are a few advancement opportunities because there's just not really anywhere to move up to. You just work as a diagnostic medical sonographer and that's it. Um, there may be like a management type position you can go into, but it, you are a little bit limited in that. Another thing is that people feel there's not a lot of career mobility. If you get fired or laid off or something like that, it can be difficult to transition to another area because you will usually be very specialized. And so it can be difficult finding a job that's hiring for that exact specialty. Now, let's talk about some of the salary statistics so you can know how much these individuals make. First of all, all these numbers come from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is the government organization which tracks and collects jobs data. And as of 2014, they predict a 26% growth rate for this profession between years 2014 and 2024. So that is a very good growth rate. They expect a lot of jobs to open up in the next decade. Now, there are 59,760 individuals employed under this profession as of 2014, so that's kind of interesting. The average salary per year, 
$68,390. That's pretty impressive considering the education requirements. The average hourly wage was $32.88 per hour. Now those uh, salary numbers are for the average within the United States and they are just averages. You can make more or less depending on how long you've been working in this profession, the industry in which you work, the state in which you live. A lot of factors can throw that off and I'll briefly cover some to tell you uh, so you can see some of the variation there. Um, first of all, what industries had the highest level of employment? Well, number one was general medical and surgical hospitals. The average salary there was $68,860. Offices of physicians came in at number two. $67,510 was the average there. And medical and diagnostic laboratories came in at number three. $66,240 was the average there. What about the top paying industries? Well, specialty hospitals paid the most. $75,550 was the average salary there. Outpatient care centers came in at number two, $72,930. And then colleges and universities, believe it or not, came in at number three, $72,270. What about the states? Which state paid the most money? Well, California came in at number one, $89,870 was the average there. Oregon, came in at number two at 85,970 and then District of Columbia number three 85,140 dollars. What about the lowest paying state? Well Alabama came in at number one 50,700 dollars. Arkansas number two 54,740 dollars and then Mississippi number three 55,000 ten dollars so that's a little bit about diagnostic medical sonographers i will put a link in the description of this video on youtube if you'd like to read an article on our website i have the statistics for all 50 states if you want to check that out so thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to our youtube channel